your steps be guided by your promise. May evil never rule me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Let us pray for the repose of the souls of... Uh, Martina Schilder, a daughter to a friend of mine, and uh, Samuel Kaigu uh, Angoge, uh, my grandfather who passed on last evening. We call to mind our sinfulness and ask the Lord to forgive our sins. I confess to the Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, but through my faults, and through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled uh, through Lenten observance, and nourished by your word, uh, through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. commandments and your work will be complete. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, and now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you, and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord the God of your father gives you. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances, as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do them in the land which you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Only take heed and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm and the response is, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O 
Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow like the wool. He scatters hoar frost like ashes. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He reveals his word to Jacob, to Israel his decrees and judgments. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his judgments. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. According to Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this gospel reading is a popular one because of the message of the law and the prophets. When we say the law and the prophets, we clearly refer to the Old Testament first five books of the Bible, the Torah, are the law, and the law is signified with Moses. And then the other writings and the prophets uh, who rose, called by God to remind the people of the law. And therefore, the law and the prophets refer to the Old Testament. And Jesus Christ is the good news in the New Testament. And he does not come to replace the law, but two things. Number one, to fulfill the law. To affirm that the law of the Lord is sacred and ought to be followed. And we have heard him say as much. But he fulfills the law uh, himself by going to the synagogue to pray, going uh, to the temple where sacrifices were offered, which was the law, fulfilling the law, so that others may too fulfill the law. Secondly, he came to perfect the law. 
fulfill it and perfect it. And he perfects it by teaching it, <clears throat> different from the teachers of the day that time, the Pharisees, what we would say, pruning, pruning what was not right that had been put by religious leaders, uh, the teachers of the day, and therefore perfecting it as it was meant by the Father to be followed. And in his person, he fulfills the law. If we listen to him and do what he commands, uh, then we are listening to the law and the prophets that are fulfilled in Jesus Christ in his person. And in his person, he perfected the law by the great sacrifice, not of lambs and cattle as offered in the temple, but in his person, becoming the sacrifice of the salvation of God's people. So two important things, fulfilling the law and perfecting it. In teaching, in practicing it himself, in teaching it the right way, and in his person, fulfilling it, and in his person, perfecting it in the great sacrifice of the cross. This is what we prepare in the Lenten season celebrate uh, the Paschal mystery, uh, the culmination of all the promises of God to save humanity in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who we experience every moment at Mass, speaking to us and receiving him in the Eucharist. Let us pray that these realities may be truly close to us our faith, so that we too may fulfill what is commanded and so perfect in our lives what we are called to be. And the Lord be with you. Number three, 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 three. <speaking in Spanish> Pray now that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Lord our God. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray the prayers of your people along with these sacrificial offerings and defend those who celebrate your mysteries for every kind from every kind of danger through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, and I are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which should be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Archbishop, David, the Auxiliary Bishop, all bishops, with all the clergy, and all your people, and all of us gathered here this morning. Remember your servants, Martina Shilda, and Samuel Kaigua, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his in baptism and in their service into humanity may also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember also all our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now at our Savior's command and as formed by the divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ, who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Six twenty. Six twenty. Six twenty. Six twenty. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Still fifty by fifty. Show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, O oh Lord. Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been.
been fed. Sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all error, make us worthy of your promises from on high, through Christ our Lord. Give, your, give to your people, our God, a resolve that is pleasing to you, for by conforming them to your teachings, you bestow on them every favor, through Christ our Lord. Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We shall go forth, our Mass is ended.